Welcome, Dean. We look forward to hearing from you. Hi, Ms. Kate. Um, good day, everyone. Inchash Kukbi Shkulm is my uh, traditional name. My English name is Dean Nelson, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm pleased to be here today representing the Little One Nation. And I thank the, the Whistler Real Estate Company for you know, ha hosting this and inviting us to be here and, you know, um, and giving us a voice you know, within our, our traditional lands. And being here, that's what I, my goal is, is to have, give a voice to the Little Wat and, you know, try and increase opportunities for all our peoples and, you know, if it's recreation or, you know, skiing on the mountain, because we are impacted, so we just want to try and find the other side of the, you know, the positive side of being here and, so that, yeah, and as well as the economic and the, you know, the working opportunities that are now available to us, you know, with all our partners. And so, again, I thank you for being here and sharing this, this time. This is an exciting time for, for Lilouette. And I'm pleased to be here, you know, representing, like I said. And one thing I'd like to share that, although it might, it seems like a paradox, but, you know, the further we move ahead, the more we kind of go back to our, our culture to guide us, you know, especially if it has to do with land and, um, yeah, the, the more we, move ahead and the nation succeeds in its economic development goals, the more we uphold and exercise our traditional values, that's exactly how it, how it is, you know, in a nutshell, that's, that's how we see ourselves. A core value of our nation has always been to protect our traditional lands by embracing our roles as stewards the Lilwad Ool have always been people of the land. You might have seen the, the phrase, Palmintual i Ukalmikwa Muta ti Timikwa, on our website and email signatures and other communications. These words, the people and land are one, and will always stick to that. That, again, is a guiding principle we live by. This phrase not only identifies who we are, but also guiding principles we apply to all our work, our community consultations to economics and development opportunities. what history is written on the land. We have been here since time immemorial. You know, we've been not present, you know, we've been um, maybe once in a while you might see some of our people here, you know, some in not so good ways, but, you know, I tell people that you want to understand how we got here, you know, what shaped us to where we are. You know, we're finally coming out of that, that dysfunctional impacts and you know, you might see some of our people here, and you know, they, that is not who we are. You know, the dysfunctions that they're showing, that's the, that's the outcome of what has happened to us. You know, and we're working very hard with partners and to make that a better situation. To put this in perspective, our presence, in 2016, an archaeological study, and that's just saying that we have been here for a long time, uncovered a 5,500-year-old 5, village site on the shores of the Birkenhead. You know, carbonated artifacts are also displayed at the 
at the Squamish Lewat Cultural Center and the further evidence of our connection to the land. Before contact, the Lewa lived peaceful, had healthy lives in a matriarchal society that valued the people. We lived in accordance to Entlachman, which is our ways, practicing our kultram, which translates to take only what you need. Carefully managing our resources, the forests, rivers, lakes, and the food, the medicine and, that are provided. And Chakman is our laws that provided the foundation for maintaining a peaceful and productive presence on the land, and which also governed our society. Colonization, an effort that began more than 150 years ago, brought devastation to all First Nations across the country. And it brought the eradication, or it was a plan that the eradication of indigenous people that included the imposition of the Indian Act, which we are presently under. And I ask our partners, if you really want to understand, you know, who we are and why we are today, then, you know, go and look at that, the Indian Act and understand what it really meant, you know, how it put us on the reserve, Indian reserve system, how it brought out those resident, residential schools that, you know, really devastated our people. You know, and we're, like I said, we're coming out from under that, but it's been a tough, tough battle with the, you know, with the government, you know, and those implications. The Indian Act denied us the cultural language and human rights. The reserve system forced us to live on 0 .004 of our traditional lands. And most specifically, the residential schools with their mandate to take the Indian out of the child destroyed our families and communities, leaving bitter legacies that continue to affect the people and other First Nations of this country. But things are changing for the Lilwat Nation as our rightful place on the land is being recognized, as our territory land and, it, and its practices continue to be documented. Our territory does include Lilwa, um, Whistler. Archaeological sites throughout Whistler showing evidence of our historical connection to the land, including Ishkins, you know, the depressions that we, f we find around here and throughout the territory. Pictographs painted on the rocks and culturally modified trees showing where people would gather. Cedar bark for clothing, baskets, and other uses. Evidence proves that we've always been here. In fact, our culture chief and former political chief, Leonard Andrew, and many others lived with their families on Green Lake, and, you know, and that's barely 70 years ago that they were children here. The Lewat Nation has a history of resistance to, ba resistance to, based on the protection of the land. Our nation was part of the Lewat Declaration of 1911, and a historic document signed by the Statlium chiefs declaring that they never surrendered their land to the crown. The document asserts sovereignty over the traditional territories of the Stallion tribes and protests the theft of First Nations land. Leowit has never wavered from this position, defending the land through peace, peaceful protest. But sometimes trust and respect were just words. The development of Whistler Blackcomb, which began in the 1960s, what was then called London Mountain, was such a situation. Although both Whistler and Black Cone Mountains are in our territory, we never, we were never part of, you know, the, or consulted about development of the resort. We saw no benefit from the development of our territory, while others who were involved prospered greatly. Last January, this changed with the signing of the Master Development Agreement between Whistler, Blackcomb, Lilwad Nation, Squamish Nation, and the province. The MDA, 
which will be in effect for the next 60 years, makes the Lilwa Nation full partners in the future development of Whistler Blackcomb. The MDA also recognizes what we've always asserted, that Whistler is on the unceded territory of the Lilwa Nation. This recognition of our territory will become increasingly important as Lilwa moves towards its forward in its quest for self-government. We currently operate under the Indian Act Band Council system, a flawed system originally designed to disempower First Nations. This system of governance creates challenges for all of us to meet the needs and aspirations of our community and our nation. Reliance on Indigenous and Northern Affairs funding has resulted in the infrastructure deficit between 30 and 40 percent. It is estimated that the total infrastructure funding deficit for the 612 First Nations in Canada is upwards of 10 billion. Leowat is committed to getting out from under the Indian Act, its restrictions and its intrusive form of government and evolving into a self-governing First Nation. Self-governance has a long been a goal and a priority set in the last three strategic plans. The process is being led by you know, our present chief and chiefs and council system, requires substantial and sustained consultation with the Uchomiuk, which is the people of the Lila Nation. Lila Nation is developing its strategy with, within an inherent right framework. Our inherent right enshrined in the Canadian Constitution recognizes the right of First Nations to be self-governing. The path to self-governance will not be easy, nor will it be quick, but it is a path we are committed to. The visions of the Chiefs and Council is for the future generations of Lilouette to live in Tlachman, which is our way, governed by Nchakman, our laws, and committed to Kultcham, which is to take only what we need you know, and leave the rest for our future. A return, to values that, a return to values that were fundamental and they were pre-colonization life. <clears throat> Moving towards self-governance means exploring opportunities, lands, and resources. Management, establishing strong partnerships and growing the nation's business. New economic opportunities are being realized in forestry, energy, construction, retail, and tourism through partnering with companies that recognize the benefit of working with the nation. Moving forward, Lila Nation will be a full participant in the, com in the economy of the region. Our vision for the economic development is clear. We will generate revenues from our territory's resources including its fish, forests, waterways, and land. We will continue building sustainable businesses through the land, through the Leowat business groups. The revenues from these businesses will be applied to the delivery of community services. These businesses will also continue to provide employment and build capacity for our community members. Developing strong partnerships will remain a focus of the nation's economic development. To date, we have established such partnerships with Lizzie Bay Logging, Sea to Sky Soil, Murphy Construction, and of course, the signing of the Master Development Agreement with the Whistler Black Home. The province and the Squamish Nation represent strong new partnerships for Lilwad. Currently, we have some projects under the way, underway that will help fulfill our economic vision. Two important projects are occurring on reserve lands. The first is the new Tazil Center building. I don't know if that is what you see when you pass by heading through the Lilouette. It's a new um, college um, learning center. So that one is, is the major one, the patchwork of ATCO trailers that have housed Tizil since it opened 
And that's why I went to school. I was in that patchwork of trailers there down by the... But that is long been uh, due for demolition, but we had nothing else, so that's what we did. Um, yeah, the 22,000 square foot purpose-built post-secondary school that will offer upgrading university courses and training programs. The facility will also be the home of the Alouette Cultural Center given in a storefront location that will be more accessible than its current second floor location in the community complex. You know, looking at the opportunities that, you know, when we, we had the trailers there and that was all we could afford at the time. You know, there was nothing. It just had to be a, a room to teach. But um, to look at, at the new building, you know, we have opportunity to, you know, to put um, significant uh, cultural aspect to it. You know, if you look at the front of it, it's, uh, it's an Ishkin, it's a pit house design, and that is, you know, we could have, we could have um, left that out and, you know, went with a strict building, but we have that opportunity now to express, you know, with our own source revenue coming up, we are we can allow ourselves to. That is something we want, and not you know basically always what we need. But we are also replacing our temporary 15-year-old gas station. You know, I say temporary because that you know the plans have always been there, and it always said temporary. But <laughs> so yeah, but uh, you know, being under the Indian Act, it's. It's very restrictive. We tried to change. We can't do anything with the land because it's not reserved. And, you know, that's a system that people don't understand. You know, it is, it's good in one way, but then it's also detrimental in another way that, you know, it restricts what we can and can't do. But we are, you know, through uh, political and legal um, decisions in our favor, you know, throughout First Nations, that we are, um, we have some advantages now, and we are seeing some, some uh, strengths that way. So, you know, politically especially, you know, being here tonight is, you know, is very significant. We also have a number of projects in Worcester March of last year, the 41 unit Red Sky townhouses we were partners in, that was completed. This past fall, Lilouette Nation broke ground on uh, mixed commercial development, you know, at Function Junction. The development will feature 17 two room, one and one bedroom housing units, commercial space, and gas station and an ongoing project in Worcester that we are committed to, to is the squamish Lillooet Cultural Center. The value of the SLCC cannot be underestimated. Not only does the entire center reestablish our presence on land, but it also brings, out, brings our culture to an international audience. To do business with the Lilwa Nation, our partners have to understand that the land and its resources belong to all the all the Ukhomikha, the people. Every Lilwa citizen has the opportunity to give input into the plans, policies, and protocols that pertain to the land and its management and stewardship. As we continue to gain more understanding of the traditional uses of our resources, cultural applications, and sustainable practice. Our economic design making will evolve. There will be new consideration as we develop conservancies, protecting wildlife habitat and other botanical resources used for food, medicine, and ceremonies. Our cultural values will continue to drive economic decisions. Traditional use and cultural values inform all of our plans, policies, and protocols inform all decisions concerning land management. Our partners commit to supporting and upholding these values. 
Leo Nation's economic development and projects must preserve or enhance the Leeuwa Nation Thailand rights, promote cultural and traditional values and environmental sustainability, create employment, training, and capacity building opportunities for Leeuwa citizens and provide stable and predictable income opportunities with acceptable risk. Today, we are engaged in a, vi a variety of development opportunities in Lilwat and Whistler and are entertaining several others, including Wedge Creek, IPP, and the Benchlands development, which will see the construction of new housing. If Lilwat Nation moves forward with all of these projects, the benefits to the community are substantial. We can expect total expenditure, debt, and equity in the amount of almost $40 million. Revenues will increase by $20 million, net profits by $1.4 million. Additionally, these projects would yield 50% more employment opportunities for our people. Lilwet's economic future is bright. We currently have four major projects underway. The Function Junction gas station is one residential and commercial development. Lilwet gas station 2.0 and a partnership with Murphy Construction building the new Tazil building. Moving forward, we will continue to assert Lilwat Thailand rights in the Lilwat territory. We will have an increasing strong influence over the activities that occur in our, our lands. And we will continue to reclaim jurisdiction over our territory and we will continue to develop and execute an inherent rights strategy that will, prove, will move our goal of self-governance forward. Leola Nation's ultimate goal is to have future generations live in, in Entlakman, in Hukman, experiencing good health and peace as the Creator intended. To accomplish this goal, we will continue to develop a diversified and sustainable economy for, in, and by the Leola Nation for all time. Or as we say in Yukamich, Kwasanam i Kwanam. Tmikwa Kasla. Coach Tim Kauk on behalf of the Liwa Nation. I thank you for your time. I look forward to working with many of you in the future. I apologize for you know for reading off the paper, but uh, I'm due to you know the politics part of things. Like my heart is in all of this work, but you know I so I apologize for that part of it, and you know I wouldn't be able to get my words out otherwise. I'd be sidetracked. And <laughs> yes, sir. Um, it's whatever. We're doing like the survey thing and the needs for the community are, right now it's trades, like um, carpentry trades and that sort of thing. But we do offer uh, upgrading and college courses through, I don't know who our partner is. It used to be Cap College, but. Fester. Yes, that's what we're hoping for is the support from the community to, you know, support us and guide us through what is needed for the growth of the communities. Okay. Yes, sir. It has been long coming, like that land, I think 20 years before it reverted back to reserve, like we applied about 20 years ago, and you know, that's how long it takes in this process that we're under, so you really want to understand the, the growth that's happened over the past two years, and you know, it's all been planned years ago, but you know, that's how long this process takes, so we're trying to move away from that and the inherent rights will give us 
that opportunity to govern ourselves how we want to do it with resources from our, you know, our local resources and revenues. So. Yes? Uh, yeah. Well, I have a year and a half in my term, so. <laughs> so a year and a half. <laughs> no, several more years than that. I think probably like more like five to ten years, like to be fully. It's a. Uh, it took us 150 years to get here, so. 